Hey, welcome to uh, Chem 75 Lab number three. Uh, this one is entitled Paper Chromatography as a Means of Separation. We'll be looking at paper chromatography as a way of separating mixtures. And so we get to do two parts. We get to do some uh, Canada versus US stuff where we uh, look at different food dyes, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we get to do our CSI thing where we have some uh, um, handwriting samples on some pieces of paper and you have to determine who wrote or what kind of instrument wrote that paper. Is that right? Yep, that's right. <laughs> yeah. it, which, which you're going to determine which pen, which pen made the writing sample. But yeah. it sounded better. Who done who, it? Who done it? The who done it? All right. Well, let's let's get at it. Okay. So what you're going to do first is at the back of the room you will find these chromatography paper samples. Much better. It looks just like paper. It is just like paper. Actually, it's just a very it's it would be a very nice writing paper. Ah, Extremely right. nice. Very porous. And what you're going to do is you're going to take two centimeters from the bottom and you're going to draw a straight flat line right across the bottom of the paper. Okay, and across the bottom of the paper you're going to make eight X's. Eight X's. So it's going to look something like this. All right, gotcha. So we need to bring a ruler. Or we have rulers here? We have rulers here. Okay. So we're going to have rulers here. We're also going to have paper here too. Go figure. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right, but so we put axes there. I'm we ready. put axes on there. Now, before we get to this stage, now I'm, I know I'm handling it with my gloves right now for the purpose of television, but when you come to the lab, you should never pick this up with your fingers. Why it would takes, that be? Well, what happens is it takes the oils from your fingers, and then the oils will offset or move the colors that separate out as you come through the, uh, through the lab. So what you want to get, we have these forceps at the back. Okay, and you want to go back and grab the, grab the forceps from the back of the room, and you want to carry your paper all the time with these forceps. Okay, pretty handy dandy little thing. Now, when you get back to your bench, of course, on your bench, not everyone is as um, good at housekeeping as the Chem 7.5s, so they will have <laughs> maybe left something on the bench. So That's very true. We don't, we don't want to we don't want to pick that up into our paper. So on your bench, you would also want a piece of paper towel put your paper, paper on. on. So I'm your paper it? goes on a piece of paper towel, you make your lines, make sure your X's start two centimeters from either side and you have eight of them across the bottom, two centimeters up from the bottom of the piece of paper. Okay, make sure it's two centimeters, right? Make sure it's two centimeters, Kay. exactly. Okay, so, so far so good, no problems, all you're doing is drawing lines. I'm good lines. with that. Forceps, paper, don't get my hands on it, I'm ready. That's right, okay. So now we're going to move on and you'll notice that at the back of the room also there are these food dyes in test tubes. Okay, one is, set, one is called USA, one is called Canada. And believe it or not, do we have different food colorings in both Canada and the United States for whatever reason, I guess. They You're don't. not just saying that. I'm not just saying it. No, okay. it's the real life truth. All right. Truth of the matter. And um, they do separate out into different colors. So what you'll notice when you go through this is you'll have different lines for different colors from both countries, which is kind of cool, I think. Right, right. But how you're going to figure this out is you're going to take these capillary tubes. Now, these work by capillary action. So they sort of suck things up. They do. <laughs> you know the test strips that we use for Caitlin for diabetes? Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing, capillary action. It sucks. You just put the blood right near the thing, and it sucks it up. Sucks it must up. be capillary action. Capillary action, yeah. Same, same thing. Okay, but what you want to do in order to get it to work. First of all, make sure your gloves are on nice and tight. We're going to try the blue USA dye here. Okay. And you can see there's tons in the bottom. These capillary tubes should stretch all the way to the bottom for you. And you just want to cake a little bit up and make sure your finger is sealed on the top because you'll notice if you unseal your finger, what happens? It would fall. It falls out, exactly. And you don't want to get this on your clothes. No. It's exactly like normal food dye. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a tiny little spot on one of the X's. And I have to be... So it didn't even suck up even uh, centimeters, like half a centimeter is all you sucked up. Yeah, it's a very, very small dot. Now it's important to note that when you use one capillary tube, that capillary tube goes back in the right tube. Oh, you leave it there. You can leave it there, yeah. For the for next e person. For everybody to use, yeah. So definitely. you wouldn't use the same one in all of the test tubes? No, definitely not. <laughs> okay. I would hope nobody would do that. I just, just wanted but to you, clarify. You that. never you never know. No. 
That's right. And so what's going to end up happening, and you'll notice that it goes a good spot on your piece of paper, will be about that size, okay? And it'll also have come through onto your paper towel on your bench. And that's how you can tell that you have enough dye on there for this to run. And it probably went through onto the bench itself. It did, so we are... Implications for... Clean up later. Clean up later. Okay. Right. So once you've got this all this done, you're going to grab yourself a partner. Jeff will be my partner for today. Oh, right on. Do I get to be the staple you guy? You get to be the staple does guy. Does this have staples in it? It does. Oh, it it does. does. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what you're going to do is you're going to pick up, and remembering that you aren't supposed to touch this with your fingers, pick up your paper chromatography paper and fold it over so that the ends aren't quite touching. You get your partner to come in. Oh, Am I close? Nope. This part has to come up. Which? So if you pull this up. This up. <laughs> How about you be the folder, I'll be the stapler. How are we? That's got to be good. Did we get it? Yeah, we did. Yes. Okay. And you then, so then, do the other side too? And then you want to, yeah, definitely want to do the other side as well. So keeping with the forceps, you fold it in. And just like, oh, we're overlapped, so we're just going to pull them apart just a little bit. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. They're over there, right there. Oh, now, now. And we're out of staples. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No way. Okay, so now we've got our little tube. <laughs> that only took us 10 minutes. Yep, we'll just show this to the camera. So we've got our tube, making sure that there's not an overlap and that you have a two centimeter space between this and your dots. And you're holding it with your forceps. With your forceps, yes, of not course. Not your fingers. Not your fingers. All right. Now, on, <laughs> now for, for, this, for this here, you'll notice that I only have one dot on my piece of paper chromatography. You will have eight dots on yours before you place it in the, in the bath. Make sure that when you do this, when you do this, this bath, this uh, acetone ammonia water bath has to be used in the fume hood. It smells <laughs> Quite strongly. <laughs> we opened it earlier. Not a good smell. It smells like what? Ammonia. <laughs> <laughs> it smells, it smells like you've been in chickens. In a chicken's den for a while. For yeah. too long. All right. Yeah. So it's not a, it's not a, exactly the nicest smell in the world. You want to keep it in the fume hood. Please make sure that you do not take it out of the fume hood. So when you're putting these in, again with your forceps. Can I gonna, open this? You can open that up. You take it over and you're just going to place it into the developing bath at the so bottom. Don't, so don't put it on the edges, make sure it's nope. away from the edges. Right in the middle, right and on then the as bottom. soon as you have it in there, you're going to cover it back up again. <laughs> oh baby. Yeah. That's oh. right. So you're going to cover it back up as soon as you have it in there. Now once you have it in there, you can move on to this, the CSI part of the lab, the next step, which All is right. great. You're going to leave this in here for at least 12 or 13 minutes. Okay, so 12 or 13 minutes, depending on when your solvent front has ran to two to three centimeters from the top of the paper. Okay. So your solvent front being so almost where it's to the wet. top. Almost to the top. Yep. Okay. Okay. So on the next part, what we have is we have our our CSI stuff. Our CSI stuff. I know this is very high tech CSI, but actually, if you've watched all the CSIs, you've probably actually seen this before. In addition to Catherine. In addition to Catherine on CSI. <laughs> so. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of piece of paper, piece of writing, okay? And this is just a sample piece of writing. The evidence. Evidence, exactly. Okay? Again, using your forceps, and you're going to cut it out so that you're going to cut out as much of the paper as possible. So get no white stuff there. Cut it so you just see the handwriting. Exactly. Okay. Or the black ink. Yeah, it's, and they're all, they're all black pieces of paper, so... We tried to make it as tricky as possible. I mean, if we had five different colors, I don't think this would be very hard, would it? <laughs> no. But, uh, uh, which one was the blue one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they are all, they are all different, or are, are all the same colors. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the piece of paper, so you just have the writing on there. You're going to place it into a Durham tube. A Durham tube. Yep, named for Lord Durham. <laughs> and did he make a pile of money like that Bunsen guy? Yeah, Bun sure him, and, him and Bunsen are good buddies. <laughs> okay, and you're going to place this sample handwriting. Try and get it as far into the, into the tube as possible. Okay, and you just use your forceps to push it down. Now, I'm going to blow it down. Um, well, it doesn't, doesn't quite work that <laughs> well, and work. I just broke my drum tube. Oh. That's not good. And that, that one costs 1500 bucks too. Yeah, something like that. Right. Anyways, what you're going to end up with... Right here. 
Actually, is that what you want? I just want another germ too. Here it is. You're going to end up with your paper sample in the bottom of your test tube, something like that. Okay. Okay. So once you once you have your paper sample in the bottom of your test tube, you're going to take approximately one mil of methanol. Now methanol we talked about a little bit last week when we did the boiling point. Again, it's a carcinogen. We don't want to get it any on ourselves. We want to do this in a fume hood if possible. So move the methanol to the fume hood before you pour it. Okay. Okay. And you're going to pour about one mil. Now about one mil is not even a finger width into your Durham tube. Did you want to use this eyedropper or is it here just for show? It's, you can actually, yeah, it's probably a good idea. Okay. <laughs> you can use the eyedropper or you can use the, just a straight pour. Probably better to use an eyedropper. Okay, you can use your eyedropper, grab some methanol, and pour it over your and sample. How much you said about a thumb width? About a thumb width, if that. It has to be about one mil. If you, you can use as, as little as possible because obviously you're going to have to boil this off eventually anyways. Oh, this would be an observation. It's already coming out. Yeah, exactly. As soon as you, put, as soon as you pour the methanol in, you will get some of the color from the dye, from the ink coming out. Yep. So it's kind of neat. Okay, so once you have this ready to go, what you're going to do is you're going to take a couple of test tube clamps, okay, a couple of test tube clamps, you're going to place them one over top of the other, and this is going to go across your 250 mil beaker from your drawer. So it'll sit something like this, okay, just so the bottom of the Durham tube just enters the water. Okay, once you're done that, we're going to grab our, our not our Bunsen burner. <laughs> oh, darn, darn, darn. I was going for a Bunsen burner. But our hot plate, we're going to place this on the hot plate, and we're going to heat up the water until the methanol starts boiling. Once the methanol starts boiling, you have to watch it really closely, because you want to leave yourself just a little bit, just not even a thumbnail width. So I can't boil it right dry. You can't boil it right dry or else you have nothing to put on your then paper. Then you have to do it again. Exactly. In another Durham tube. Exactly. So while this is all happening and going on, you can grab yourself another piece of paper, okay, and you're going to put, again, three centimeters from the bottom, you're going to put your five known inks and your one spot for your unknown ink on the bottom of the paper. Five inks like we have right um, there. Samples of all the inks over here. I get you. Exactly. So what you're going to do is take each of these pens. Sorry, I don't know which camera it is. This one. Okay. We take each of these pens, and you're going to put a small dot. Same size as the other one. Same size as the other one, on the bottom of the piece of paper like that, all the way across. Okay. Again, trying not to touch this with your fingers. Okay. Forceps. Forceps. Using your forceps. Right. Once you've done that and you've boiled off your methanol, again, you're going to take a capillary tube, okay, close the one end, ah. and take it out of, your, out of your hot water bath. You should have about this much. This takes a little bit more than the dyes. It's not as concentrated. Okay. Then you're going to make a dot similar to the way you did it before. It's, it's much less concentrated, eh? Much less concentrated, yeah. So what's going to happen is we're going to be able to see which pen you was used to do that handwriting piece of paper. Exactly, exactly. You're going to be able to tell once you place this in the in the bath, once you've stapled it and placed it in the bath, which one of these pens made this made this sample of handwriting by the different levels of of the different dyes in the in the writing. That sounds good. Yeah. So this sounds like a lab that there will be a whole lot of observations for. Yes, observations are very important. Not a whole lot of calculations. No. 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 Not very many calculations. You will have to calculate an RF value in the end, but... Just a little bit. Just so a little bit. So did you want us to staple that one too? No, no let's no. not staple that one. <laughs> let's not I go do there have, again. Do I have an example of what it should look like in the end out here? I thought we had one. One sec. I don't see one. Anyway, while he's looking at that, let me look to see what our other stuff is doing over here. Let me turn and see if anything's actually happening. Oh, beautiful. Can I take this out? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, just to give the folks at home an idea, oh, this is going to smell, um, of what happens with this dye. Oh, shit. Do this in a few more. Holy smokes. So here is what happens with the dye. You'll see that it goes up there, and what you're wanting to do with the first one anyway is compare the USA blue 
with the Canadian blue, same thing throughout the whole thing. And then, oh, boy. <laughs> so glad we have this on tape, but I'm starting to cry. And then in the, in the last one, we compare the handwritten ink with the ink samples from the pens, and you'll be able to say, see similarities. Lots of observations in this lab. So make sure you have a, some kind of a table or some paper ready to do lots of observations. And if you want to get a look at what they, they look like all the way across, this is a very old one, 1974, I believe this was done. So some of the colors have faded, but this is exactly what you will get. Well, hopefully, if you do it right. So okay. This is what you should get. Is there anything else, or should we wrap up? No, just uh, just a couple of just precautionary measures, like with the acetone, uh, ammonia, and water bath. Be extremely careful with it. We're using it outside of the fumigant. It's not a good idea. Uh, oh. The ammonia solution it is quite concentrated. It's actually about four or five molar ammonia solution, so it's not very nice stuff. <laughs> and uh, the acetone, of course, we don't want to get acetone on our skin. With the methanol, make sure that when you're boiling off your, or your methanol that you don't boil it too quickly because what happens is you get dry ink in the bottom and you'll never be able to get it, recover oh, it. So I'm with you. Well, sure these, these uh, Durham, Durham tubes, tubes will be at the back. Um, the, probably the best Durham tubes to use though are mm -hmm. their 13 mil test tubes in their drawer. Okay, okay, that sounds good. Um, was there anything else I wanted to ask you? Oh, the methanol thing. So the hot plate, watch that. Don't get the hot plate too hot. We saw that last week when we were boiling methanol, that some people's um, methanol just all of a sudden started going crazy. And uh, so you want to be careful with that this time because you don't want to lose it all. I, th I think that's the lab then. So we we used paper chromatography to separate some mixtures. And based on that, we were able to determine uh, what uh, components were inside. Exactly. Wonderful. Good. Thanks. We'll see you next time.